how's my audio? How's my video? Good evening to all of you, my dear learners. Before we begin our discussion tonight, let's wait for some few more minutes para mas maging malinaw yung video natin at yung audio. Paki-comment nga po kung okay na yung audio natin at yung video. All right. So once again, good evening to all of you. At uh, na-miss ko kayong lahat. Naging busy ang mga nakaraang araw sa buhay ni Teacher Aubrey dahil nag-start na nga ang classes sa public schools. Kaya naman na uh, naging abala. At eto na tayo ngayon. Uli tayong mag um, Let's wait for some more live audience tonight. The audio is fine. Thank you. How about the video? Okay po ba yung video? Parang feeling ko... Medyo malabo yung video natin. Ah. Maghintay pa tayo ng konti para mas luminaw pa yung video natin. Or I think uh, may problema lang ng konti sa... Yeah, the video is a little pixelated. Let's wait for some more minutes. Okay, good evening to all of you, my dear learners. And tonight, I would like this discussion to be a very interactive and engaging. Ini-invite ko ang lahat na makip-participate sa gagawin nating discussion. Ilagay ang inyong comments sa ating live chat box. Kung nanonood kayo sa inyong mga cellphones, ang live chat, chat box ay nandiyan sa iba ba? At kung nanonood sa inyong mga computers or laptops, nandiyan po sa kanan ang live chat box. Alright, so... Sige, medyo... Mabagal lang siguro yung internet, kaya pixelated yung video. Pero maya-maya, hintay natin ng konti, Lady Naulian. Ayan, good evening sa lahat ng naghintay ng Matsyaga, Patrick Malgapo, Marisa. Hello? Hello sa inyo, Consigo, Sofia, estudyante ko yan. Yung mga estudyante ko, hello, shout out sa inyo. Mag-comment na kayo sa live chat box natin kung nanonood kayo. Hello, Yen Yurel. Good evening. Finally, may live na si Teacher Aubrey. Hello, Mateo. Alright. English share. Hello, Teacher Janet. Hello, Rogelio. Hello, Tess Marinas. At sa lahat, hindi ko na po kayo maiisa isang ma-shoutout. Ang dami ninyo. Ayan, Hot Popsy. Salamat sa ating one, more than 100 live audience tonight. At alam nyo ba na very... Yes, nanonood mula sa South Cotabato, taga dyan ang mama ko sa South Cotabato. Yes, salita. So, thank you that. Somewhere there. Ayan, good evening sa inyong lahat. At ang ating topic tonight ay very exciting dahil tatalakayin po natin ang karugtong. Yes, it's the continuation of the last or the previous topic we had, which was the B-verbs is, am, is, and are. At ito yung continuation niya, gaya ng pinangako ko sa inyo. Uh, which I, which are these two? We have was and where. So, sabi ko nga dyan, diba, simple lang pala. Kaya naman pag-aaralan natin ngayon, hindi kayo malilito. Uunahan ko na kayo na kapag natapos ninyo ang live video natin tonight, ay uh, masasabi nyo, ah, madali lang pala gamitin yung was at where. Doon lang pala siya dapat gamitin. Siguro sa mga advanced learners na ay uh, madali lang pala sa inyong topic na to. Pero gusto kong ituro ito dahil nga gaya ng lagi kong sinasabi para humusay tayo sa kahit na anong larangan, lalo na when it comes to English grammar, dapat i-master natin yung tinatawag natin a basic. Okay? Yung fundamentals. Yung pinaka-basic na kapag na-master nyo ito na nagkaroon kayo ng strong foundation, mas mapapadali kapag nag-move on kayo into a more complex level. So, yan po yung pag-aaral natin tonight. Magiging proactive tong talakayan natin kaya hinihiling ko ang lahat na once I gave you the examples, the meaning, uh, gagawa, ang gagawin nyo ay gawa kayo ng sarili nyo nga uh, pangumusap okay, at sa bandang huli ay uh, mayroon tayo ng short quiz. Yes, 10 item quiz para check kung natuto ba talaga kayo sa ating discussion. Sige po, mag-comment lang kayo dyan. I will take note of all your topic suggestions. So now, before anything else, if you'll be learning something from this video tonight, my dear learners, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Siyempre, i-like po ninyo, i-share, at mag-comment din kayo, mag-subscribe, at i-click ang notification bell para lagi po kayong updated. And before we begin, I want to 
Yes. Just like what we usually do, just like what I usually do, at the beginning of the topic, I motivate all of you. And at the last part, of course, syempre may isha-share din ako sa inyo. So this one, this quotation I was able to search has a relation with our topic tonight. So this is it. It's from Thomas S. Monson. Sabi niya, the past is behind. Learn from it. So yung, nak- yung nakaraan daw, eh, tapos na. It's already behind there. Hindi na natin mababalikan. So ang gagawin na lang natin ay matututo mula rito. The future is ahead at ang hinaharap ay paparating pa lang. Ano kailangan? Mag-prepare tayo. Maghanda tayo para rito. And the present is here. At ang kasalukuyan ay naririto ngayon nangyayari. At kailangan, we have to live, live it. Kailangan mabuhay tayo sa present. At yung mga nangyari sa past, mag, matuto tayo doon at maghanda tayo sa mga mangyayari in the future. But of course, lagi tating isis. Yes, lagi nating i-maximize yung nagaganap araw-araw kasi hindi hindi na natin yun mababalikan. Ano? Let's always live our lives to the fullest. Kaya nga nang sabi ni Thomas S. Monson, the past is behind, learn from it, the future is ahead, prepare for it, the present is here, live it. That's, that is from Thomas S. Monson. Okay, so ngayon, umpisa na nga natin ang ating talakayan. Ayan, sana medyo mas lumino yung video ko. Ano, medyo pixelated na pansin ko. Pero maya-maya, hopefully, ay uh, lulinaw na rin siya. Ngayon, simulan na natin ang ating talakayan. We are going to discuss the be verbs, was, and where. Sabi ko sa inyo, simple lang ito, kaya dapat mag-aralan natin at i-master. It's part of the basic English grammar course na dapat ninyong malaman. Ano po? Ngayon, Etong topic na to, was and where. Okay, siguro naririnig nyo yan, was and where. Pag sinabi po natin was and where, my dear learners, they are also an example of be verbs. Sila rin po ay tinatawag natin be verbs. At ang ibang tawag po sa be verbs ay to be verbs or being verbs. Bakit silang kinoconsider na being verbs? Because they state they state the being of a verb o ipinapahayag yung kalagayan nung isang kilos or verb sa pangusap na ipinapahayag natin. At ang be verbs na was at where, mahal kong mga mag-aaral, ito po ay ginagamit for past tense. Ginagamit ang dalawang ito kapag ang kilos ay tapos na o nangyari na sa nakaraan. Okay? Ngayon, babalikan natin ng kaunti yung huli nating pinag-aralan na am, is, are. Dahil yung tatlong pinag-aralan natin nung nakaraan na yun, yun po ay be verbs din, pero ginagamit natin kapag present tense o yung mga kilos na nangyayari sa kasalukuyan. Samantalang eto namang pag-aaralan natin ngayong was and where, ginagamit sa mga kilos na tapos na. Pero balikan natin, importante kasing matouch natin yung pinag-aralan natin nung nakaraan. Okay. So, yung nakaraang pinag-aralan nating tatlo ay am, is, and are. Sila po yung tinatawag nating be verbs na ginagamit sa present tense ng verb. Okay? At anong kahulugan niyan? Pag sinabing present, pwedeng yung mga kilos ay nangyayari ngayon, now, pwedeng this year, sa taong ito nangyayari, o sa buwang ito nangyayari, this month. Yun po yung present. Samantala naman, yung was and where, kinukonsider silang past be verbs, okay? Kasi ka po, maaaring nangyari kahapon, yung gustong ipahayag, yesterday, pwedeng last week, nakaraang linggo, o kaya naman last year o nakaraang taon. Ngayon, mag-focus tayo dito sa was and where. Pero gaya ng sinabi ko, importanteng mabalikan natin yung am, is, are. Ang am po and is, ginagamit siya for present, okay? Pero kapag past na, kapag tapos na, ang gagamitin nyo na, for am and is, I was. It's not pronounced as was. It's not was. It is was. Everybody say was. Okay, was. Was. I remember kanina umaga sa online class namin mga estudyante ko, I had this um, tongue twister. Fuzzy, wuzzy. Yeah, was, was yeah, it's pronounced as was, not as was. Okay. 
Yan po siya. Was. Also, kapag naman po are, ang gamit sa present, at tapos na yung kilos, ang gagamitin nyo na for past ay where. Again, say were. Were. It's not where. Yung where po na pronounce, pronounce as where, that is where o saan. W-H-E-R-E. -E. Pero itong where, were na to, ang pronunciation dito ay were. Were. It's not where. Yung where po, yun po yung nagtatanong kung saan. This one, were, is pronounced as were. Say it. Were. Alright? That's it. Ayan. Ngayon naman, magpumuna tayo rito. Bigyan natin ng mga halimbawa para mas malinawa ninyo. Okay? So, for present, sinasabi natin, I am at school. Am ang ginamit kasi present. Ngayon, nasa school siya. Pag gagawin mo siyang past, it will be, I was at home. Siguro ngayon, nasa school siya. Kasi kanina or kahapon, nasa bahay siya. Or ako, I was at home. That is for the past. Okay? Was na ang ginamit dahil tapos na. Wala na siya sa bahay, nasa school na siya ngayon. That's it. Another example is, He is a principal. He is a principal. That is for present. Ngayon ay isa siyang kunuro. Ang past niya ay, He was a teacher. Bago siya maging principal, siya muna ay isang guro dati. He was a teacher. He was a teacher. Another one is, She is in Manila. She is in Manila. Ngayon, nasa Manila siya. She is. Ngayon yon. Pero dati, nasa Tokyo siya. Nasa capital siya ng Japan. Pero ngayon, nasa capital na siya ng Philippines, Manila. She was in Tokyo. That siya ay nasa Tokyo. Pero ngayon, she is in Manila. Okay? Another, meron din tayong pronoun it. It ang ginagamit kapag tumutukoy tayo sa mga bagay na walang kasarian, neutral. O kaya naman sa mga hayop na hindi natin tiyak ang kasarian o sa mga lugar o sa mga pangyayari. Dito sa sentence natin na ito na it is hot, tumutukoy ito sa bagay. Okay? Pwede siguro yung baso, siguro yung tubig na nandito sa baso, sabihin natin it is hot or this glass is hot. This, it is hot. Okay? It is hot. Yun yung present. Ngayon mainit siya. Dahil siguro pinakuloan. Pero kanina, it was cold. It was cold. Malamig siya. Pwedeng kanina or kahapon nasa ref siya. Malamig siya. Pero tapos na kasi it was cold. That is past. Okay? Ngayon naman, dito tayo sa paggamit ng where. Were. It's not where. It's were. Were. Okay? Say it. Were. We are eating. Kumakain tayo ngayon. It's present. Okay? present siya. Pero kapag sinabing we were cooking, kanina or kahapon, pwedeng nagluluto. That's already past. Kasi ginamit na ay were. We were cooking. Tapos na po yan. That's already in past. Okay? And also, another example is this. You are working. You are working. That's present. Ngayon yan nangyayari. Nagtatrabaho ka ngayon. Pero kapag sinabi natin, you were studying, you were studying. Dati, in the past, nag-aaral ka. Pagka-graduate mo, ngayon, nagtatrabaho ka na, you are working. So in the past, you were studying. You were studying. And another example for were, ginagamit din siya for the pronoun, they. They are here. Sila ay naririto. Sila ay nandito. That's present. Ngayon nangyayari yun. Pero dahil ngayon nandito sila, in the past, nandun sila. They were there. They were there in the past. But in the present ngayon, they are here. Okay? So, anong mapapansin ninyo? Bago tayo mag-move on sa iba pa po, uh, gusto kong mapansin ninyo ito. Nakunin nyo itong sentence na ito. We are eating or we were cooking. At ang sentence na, it is hot or it was cold. Dito po, gusto kong ipunawa sa inyo na ang be verbs ay pwede siyang maging verb itself 
o wala na siyang karugtong na action verb. May ibang uri kasi tayo ng verb at tatalakayin ko yan sa mga sunod nating live videos. May iba't ibang uri tayo ng verbs. Basically, kapag sinabi nating verbs, tumutuko yan sa pandiwa o salitang kilos. Ganun po sa balarilang Filipino. Mas madali sa balarilang Filipino kasi wala ng um, variation sa uri ng pandiwa. Basta kapag sinabing pandiwa o verb, tumutuko yun sa kilos. Yun po yung kaibahan ng grammar or balarila natin sa Filipino language. In English language, in English grammar, kapag sinabing verb, pwedeng linking verb, pwedeng be verb, pwedeng action verb. Okay? Yung be verb, okay, tinatawag rin siya, pwede rin siyang gamitin as helping verb. Sa pangungusap na it is hot, pansin niyo, wala po kayo diyan mapapansin na verb na kilos o galaw. Dahil ang mismo verb dyan, ang main verb natin dyan ay yung ating linking verb na is. Okay? Siya mismo yung ginamit natin na verb. The word is. Okay? Pero dito sa sentence natin, sa sentences na we are eating, we were cooking, yung be verbs dyan na are sa present at were sa past, were sa past, ginamit sila dyan bilang helping verb. Teacher Aubrey, ano po ba yung helping verb na tinatawag na yan? Tinatawag nating helping verb, my dear learners, kasi nga from the word itself, itself na help, nandiyan siya para magbigay tulong. Ang function niya, tinutulungan niya para mas mabigyang linaw yung kasunod na action verb. So in this sentence, we are eating, the subject is we, are is the helping verb, kaya siya Sinabing helping verb, malalaman nyo at masasabi nyo helping verb ang isang verb kapag may kasunod siyang action verb o verb na nagpapakita ng kilos. At ang verb na nagpapakita dyan ng kilos ay yung salitang eating okay? o kumakain. Okay? Another is we were cooking. Yung word dyan na be verb na nasa past tense, That is considered as helping verb dahil ang kasunod niya ay isang action verb, which is cooking. So take note of those things. Tatalakayin natin yung mga uri ng verbs na yan sa mga susunod nating live. Ngayon, magtutungo tayo dito. Dito sa pag-aaralan natin about was and where, gaya ng nakaraan, magfo-focus tayo sa gamit ng was and where into different forms. We are going to touch the positive statements or tinatawag nating affirmative Matatalakay din natin yung tinatawag nating negative statements at matatouch at matatalakay din natin kung paano gagamitin ng was and where for question form kapag tayo ay magtatanong. Ngayon, umpisahan muna natin dito sa positive statements or tinatawag natin affirmative. It's not affirmative, it's affirmative. Everybody say affirmative. Alright? Affirmative. Ayan. So, tingnan po natin, ang pronouns o kapag ang subject natin ay ang mga pronouns na I o ako, she o siya na babae, he o siya na lalaki, it o ito, tumutukoy pwede sa isang bagay, sa isang lugar, sa isang hayop na hindi tiyak ang kasarian o sa isang pangyayari, or any singular subject o anumang pinag-uusapan na iisa lamang o singular, ang gagamitin po ay was. Okay? Was. Tandaan na kapag a subject ay I, she, he, it, or any singular subject, ang gagamitin ay was. At gagamitin lang ito kung ang kilos ay nangyari na sa nakaraan o tapos na. Okay? So, bigyan natin ng mga halimbawa. The first one, let's say, I was at home. Ako ay naroon sa bahay. Ako ay nandoon sa bahay. Ibig sabihin, sa pangungusap na ito, sinasabi natin, tapos na yung pangyayari dahil was ang ginamit. I was at home. Okay? Another one is this. She was at home. She was at home. Another example is, He was at home. He pertains to siya na lalaki. He was at home. Ngayon, subukan din yung gumawa ng pangungusap. Ilagay niyo sa live chat box natin para mabasa ko mamaya at ng buong uh, YouTube online community of learners. Another example is, it was at home. It was at home. And gaya ng sabi ko sa inyo, ginagamit din ng was 
for any singular subject. So, dito sa pangungusap natin is, we have the subject serio. Serio is only one. He is a singular subject. Serio was at home. Lahat ng mga binigay kong pangungusap na ginamitan natin ng was, I was, she was, he was, it was, serio was, lahat po sila ay nagpapakita na kilos na tapos na dahil po was ang ginamit natin. At was ang gamitin kapag sila po ang subject. I, he, he, it, or any singular subject. Ngayon naman, paano natin sila ipapahayag yung mga pangungusap na yun kapag negative statement. Okay? Kapag negative statement po, my dear learners, nagilag pa rin ata yung connection natin. Kapag negative statement po, eto na tayo, mag-move on na tayo sa negative statement. Ayan, thank you. Mag-share lang kayo ng examples ninyo sa ating live chat box. For the negative statement, simple lang ang gagawin. Kapag po ang subject pa rin ay I, she, he, it, or any singular subject, at ang gagamitin pa rin ay was sa kanya, ang gagawin lang ay magdadagdag tayo ng salitang not or magiging was not, was not. O kapag ginagamit, <clears throat> kapag ginagamit ito sa spoken English, Karaniwan, ginagamitan natin ang tinatawag nating contraction or yung pagdudugtungin natin, yung salitang was and not, magiging wasn't. Okay? Wasn't. So, it will be, I was not at home. O pwedeng sabihin, I wasn't at home. Yun yung mas karaniwang naririnig kapag nagsasalita, di ba? Mas communicative siya pakinggan. Mas speaking yung dating niya kaysa sabihin, I was not at home. Mas salita yun kapag nagsasalita na contraction yung sinasabi. I was I was not at home or I wasn't at home. Ayan po. Another example is this. She was not at home. Or pwede rin contraction na. She wasn't at home. Okay? Another example is He was not at home. O pwede rin namang maging he wasn't at home. Kapag tumutukoy sa bagay o sa lugar o pangyayari o hayop na hindi tiyak ang kasarian, it was not at home or it wasn't at home. Kapag singular subject naman, it will be uh, serio was not at home. O pwede namang serio wasn't at home. Okay? Ngayon, Teacher Aubrey, paano namang kapag gagamitin po ang was Pag magtatanong po tayo. Ngayon, mag-move on tayo sa paggamit ng was in question form. Madali lang po. Madali lang. Ayan, nakikita ko yung mga examples ninyo, ha? Sige, magpo-flash lang ako ng ibang examples. Okay, hanap tayo. Sabi ni Yen, I was a student. Ayan, dati raw siyang isang estudyante. Sabi ni Gail, oh, hello anak, estudyante ko yan. <laughs> she was at school. Ayan, anak, um, lalagyan ng tuldok kapag tatapusin ang pangungusap. Ano po? Ayan. Ayan, may nanonood mula sa Cebu. Maayong gabi po sa inyo dyan sa Cebu. Tama ba yung Cebuano ko? <laughs> okay, ito estudyante ko yan. Si Rich. Hello Rich, sa mga estudyante kong nanonood. Good evening sa inyo mga anak. Ayan, bukas holiday. Pahinga ang online class natin. She was a nurse. Sabi ni Zia, na estudyante ko rin, Hello anak, she was a nurse. Very good. Dati siyang isang nurse. Ngayon siguro, nag-aral siya. Baka doktor na siya ngayon. Ano no? Very good yan, anak. Okay, so, i-continue natin. Ipagpatuloy natin yung discussion natin. Simple lang po ang paggamit ng be verb na was sa question form. Ang mangyayari lang, may pagbabalik na rin lang tayo. Uunahin lang natin, di ba, sa mga sentences na uuna yung subject. Kapag po magtatanong tayo, uunahin lang natin yung be verb na was. So, it will be like this. It will be Was I at home? Pinagbaliktad lang yung I was. Uunahin nyo lang yung be verb na was kapag magtatanong. Diba sa sentence, I was at home, it will be, was I at home? Or kapag negative question form naman, 
wasn't I at home? Ganyan lang po. Ah. Ngayon, subukan nyo gumawa rin ng sarili ninyong uh, question form gamit yung be verb na was. Another example is, kanina, she was at home. Kapag gagawin tanong, magiging was she at home? Or kapag negative naman, di ba? She was not at home. Magiging wasn't she at home? Ganun lang po kadali. Another example, kapag he naman ang subject kanina, he was at home. Kapag magiging patanong, pagbabalik na rin lang yung he was, magiging was he at home? Or para sa negative naman, magiging wasn't he at home? As simple as that. Another is kapag ang subject ay it, kanina sabi natin it was at home. Kapag gagawin question, pagbabalik na rin lang natin yung it was. It will be was it at home? Kapag negative naman, wasn't it at home or was not it at home? Okay? So, ganun lang kadali. Kapag naman singular subject, yung kaninang example natin, serio was at home. Magiging was serio at home? Kapag negative, wasn't serio at home? Ganun lang po kadali. Ngayon, kapag pupatanong, syempre huwag kakalimutan, tatapusin ang pangungusap ng may question mark sa hulihan. At kapag gumagawa tayo ng pangungusap, patanong man yan or statement form, declarative form, imperative form, or anumang form ng sentence, kapag po nagpapahayag tayo, tuldok, tatapusin ang tuldok, kapag nagtatanong, tatapusin ang question mark. At kapag sumusulat ng pangungusap, written man or type written, uumpisahan po natin ng malaking titik. Titingnan ko itong mga comments ninyo ha. Kapag ako kasi nagtuturo sa mga estudyante ko, gusto ko na kapag sumusulat, lalo essays, nalilimutan nilang i-apply yung proper capitalization. Alam nyo mga anak, my dear learners, um, elementary pa tayo, di ba? Primary pa lang itinuturo yung proper capitalization kasi dapat na-apply yun sa pagsusulat. Gaya ng pangusap na ito. Wait lang. Um, ito, very good to. Very good tong example ni Sas Sasuke. Sasuke, Sasuke. Okay? Was the road dangerous? Was the road dangerous? Tama yan. Very good example. Inumpisahan niya ng malaki ang titik at tinapos niya with the use of a question mark. Okay. So, ito pa may nagtanong. Um, ito, she wasn't my crush. She wasn't my crush. Tama tong statement. Pero ang puna ko lang dito, Joseph Zo, use the proper capitalization. Subukan mong i-comment uli yan na dapat malaki yung letter S kasi yun yung start nung, nung uh, sentence mo, dapat capitalize yung first letter. At dahil sentence yan, statement yan, declarative sentence, tapusin mo with the use of a period. Okay? Huwag kalimutan yan. Another, ito pa, tama pa. Very good din si Jomar Colandog. Sabi niya, wasn't I in Manila? Very good example. Tama yan. Si Mekman, I wasn't at home. Ayan, Mekman, don't forget to apply the proper capitalization. Siyempre, kapag nag-aaral tayo, kung itatama din lang natin, itama natin yung lahat ng aspect when it comes to speaking, to grammar, to writing. When it comes to writing, pag, kapag nag-aaral kayo or gumagawa kayo ng letter, when it comes to business writing or academic writing, kapag check ng teacher or ng boss ninyo, huwag mo kakalimutan yung proper capitalization and proper punctuation marks. Importante po yun, ano? Hindi lang tayo basta natin inaaral ang grammar. Kailangan i-apply din po natin yung mga ganitong bagay, yung capitalization and punctuation marks. Ngayon, nalaman na natin yung paggamit ng was when it comes to positive statement, negative statement, and question form. Ngayon, mag-move on naman tayo sa paggamit ng be verb na where, were. It's not where. Yung where po, yun yung patanong. Nagtatanong ng saan. W-H-E-R-E. Kapag po were na be verb, it's pronounced as were. Everybody say it. Were. It's not where. Were. At yung contraction naman na we are, it's not pronounced as where. Usually, yun yung pagkakamali ng marami. Ang pronunciation doon, dahil contraction siya ng we and are, it is pronounced as we're. We're going home or we're going home. We're going home. 
Okay? Ganun po yun, ha? Tandaan. Mag-move on tayo sa paggamit ng be verb na were. We will have three parts pa rin. We have the positive statements or affirmative. We, we will also touch the negative statements. And the third one, we will also discuss how to form um, questions using the be verb were. Okay? So dito muna tayo sa positive statements using the be verb were. Okay, so ginagamit natin ang be verb na were if the sentence or if the action is in past tense or in past form. Ginagamit siya kapag ang subject o pinag-uusapan ay you o ikaw, we o tayo, they, sila, or any plural subject o anumang pinag-uusapan na marami o hindi sa Okay, were po ang ginagamit. Okay, let's have examples. We have you were at home. Nasa bahay ka, tapos na yun. Hindi yan ang nila. You were at home. Pwede ang ibig sabihin niyang you were at home. You were at home yesterday. You were at home last year. You were at home last month or last week. That's it. Another example is we were at home. We were at home. Tayo ay nasa bahay, pwedeng yesterday, last year, last week. Another example is, they were at home. Sila ay nasa bahay, pwedeng nung nakaraang taon, kahapon, o nung nakaraang linggo. Were, dahil past na po, tapos na yan ha. Another is, Serio and Marimar were at home. Ayan, si Serio at si Marimar. Okay, kanina sa was na ginamit natin, Serio lang yung subject natin. Kasi po, ginagamit ang was for singular subject. Samantalang dito, ang ginamit na natin ay plural subject. Dinagdagan natin si Seryo. Idinagdag natin si Marimar. Dalawa na sila, kaya they are considered as plural subject. At pinagdugtong sila gamit ang word na end. Seryo and Marimar were at home. Seryo and Marimar were at home. Ngayon, Teacher Aubrey, paano naman po kapag negative statement? Kahalintula din po sa was, nagdagdag lang tayo ng word na not, ganun din po ang gagawin natin kapag po ang ayan, feeling ko luminaw na rin yung video ko. <laughs> okay, pero buti na lang malinaw yung audio natin. So kapag negative statement po, ang gagawin lang katulad ng was, dadagdagan lang po ang word ng salitang not. It will be were not o yung contraction form which is weren't, weren't, or weren't. It's not weren't, it's weren't, okay? So it will be you were not, or you weren't, we were not, or we weren't, they were not, or they weren't, or any plural subject. Ngayon, gamitin natin sila sa pangungusap. It will be you were not at home. O pwede mong gamitin yung contraction na you weren't at home. As simple as that. Next is, we were not at home. It will be, we weren't at home. As simple as that. Diba? Madali lang. Madali lang po ito. Tatandaan nyo lang sa paggamit ng we, sa paggamit ng was and were, titingnan nyo kung ano yung subject. At kapag pas naman na or tapos na yung kilos, was or where ang gagamitin? Didepende ka na lang sa subject. Kapag ang subject ay para sa was, was ang gagamitin. Kapag yung mga binanggit kong subject na ito, were po ang gagamitin mo. Okay, sige, dito pa rin tayo sa halimbawa natin. We have, we were not at home. Or pwedeng sabihin, we weren't at home. Pwede rin namang, they were not at home. They were not at home. Or yung contraction, which is, they weren't at home. Okay? O yung plural subject natin, we have Serio and Marimar. Mm, Serio and Marimar were not at home. Pwedeng maging Serio and Marimar weren't at home. Okay? Ngayon, paano naman po gagamitin yan, Teacher Aubrey, for question form? For question form, ganun lang din, katulad sa was, pagpapalitin mo lang po, uunahin lang yung salitang were, at isusunod yung subject. So it will be Kanina, sabi natin, you were at home. It will be, were you at home? At kapag nagtatanong, tandaan yung tamang paggamit ng intonation. Kapag po ang tanong ay answerable or masasagot ng yes or no or oo o hindi lamang, 
ang intonation po ay pataas. It will be like this. Were you were you at home? Were you at home? Were you at home? Pataas. Pero kapag ang mga tanong po ay masasagot ng dire direct answer, hindi siya pwedeng masagot lang ng yes or no, ang intonation po ay falling intonation. Okay? So, kapag ang tanong kunyari ay, Where were you last week? Where were you last week? Nasaan ka nung nakaraang linggo? Diba? Ang intonation niya ay, Where were you last week? Falling intonation. Pero kapag ang tanong ay masasagot ng yes or no, ang intonation ay rising intonation, pataas. Were you at home? Weren't you at home? Pataas po yung intonation. Okay? So, natouch lang natin yung intonation kapag sa spoken po, gagamitin itong mga bagay na ito. Another is this. Yung sentence natin kanina ay, we were at home. Kapag patanong, babalik na rin lang yung we were, magiging were we at home? Were we at home? Kapag negative, weren't we at home? That's it. Another example is, kanina sinabi natin, they were at home. They were at home or sila ay nasa bahay. Pwedeng last week, last year, last month, ano, or kahapon, yesterday. Pagbabalik na rin lang yung they were, it will be, were they at home? Were they at home? O kaya naman, kapag negative, it will be, weren't they at home? Weren't they at home? Okay? At ngayon naman, let's have another example. Kapag naman ang... Uh, Subject natin ay plural subject, hindi natin ginamit yung pronoun na uh, you, we, they. Ito po, we have the example earlier na Serio and Marimar were at home. Kapag gagawin pa tanong yan or question form, pagbabalik pa rin lang yung Serio and Marimar where? Magiging were, were Serio and Marimar at home? Kapag naman negative, weren't Serio and Marimar at home? Ganun lamang po, kasimple. Okay? Take note of that. Ngayon po, ang gusto kong gawin ninyo ay gumawa kayo ng mga pangungusap ninyo. Gamitin yung uh, positive statement or affirmative. Paano naman kapag negative statement? Tadag lang ng not. At maganda sana na gamitin nyo yung contraction. Wasn't or weren't. Weren't. At gamitin din po yung question form. Sa question form, pwedeng positive din, pwedeng negative statement, negative uh, question form. Sige nga po, babasa ako ng mga halimbawa ninyo ha. Titingnan natin. From Zia, we were cooking. Very good, anak. Hello, Joris. Ayan. Um, ayan, may tanong. Were... Were you enjoying the live session? Were Were you enjoying the live session? Mm -hmm. Another example: We were attending online class. We were just celebrating my cousin's birthday. Good job. They weren't at school from Jamila. They were, they were at festival. Okay, ayan. Was she done cooking? Was she done cooking? Ayan, thank you sa mga halimbawa ninyo. Ngayon, ipagpatuloy na. Tandaan, before we move on to the quiz, I want you to keep these things in your mind. Na ginagamit po natin ang was for first person singular na I, and third person singular na he, she, and it, or any singular subject. Ginagamit ang was for the pronouns I, he, she, and it, or any singular subject. At ginagamit naman natin ang were, still, it is for past tense, we are using the be verb were for the second person singular and plural you, your, and yours. Okay? And the first and third person plural, we and they. Ginagamit ang word for um, you, we, they, or any plural subject. Okay, so ngayon, let's have our quiz time. Are you ready? Are you ready? Sige. Anito lang kasimple ang gagawin, my dear learners. 
Ang gagawin lamang po ay kung kumplituhin, you have to complete the sentences using the correct B verb, choose from was and where. Mamimili lang kayo kung was po ba or were. Was or were. Okay, ilagay po sa live chat box ang inyong mga kasagutan and I will acknowledge those who can give the correct answer. Okay, so let's begin. Number one, you have eight seconds to answer. Number one, wait, ano nga, off shoulder natin, easy natin. <laughs> Number one is this, I blank driving to the office. Just look at the subject para makapag-decide kung was ba o where. Go. Okay, the first correct answer came from Gail Fajardo. Okay, the correct answer for number one is was. Was. It will be, I was driving to the office. I was driving to the office. Number two is this. You blank eating some fruits. You blank eating some fruits. Go. Okay, the first three correct answers came from Joseph Zaw, from Teacher Janet of English Era YouTube channel, and from Sasuke. Hello, hello. So for number two, the correct, the correct answer is were. It will be you were eating some fruits. You were eating some fruits. Okay, next, number three. Number three is this. He blanked about to eat dinner. He blanked about to eat dinner. Put your answers on the live chat box. So the first correct answer came from... Okay, the first correct answer came from Teacher Janet. Hello. Yeah, that's the answer was from Joseph, from Gail, from Raphael, from Jomar. Very good job from Mervin, from Aubrey. Hello, ato kayo. May kapangalan ako. <laughs> and from Yen Yurel and also from Sasuke. Okay, so for number three, the correct answer is was. Was po ang tamang sagot. It is he was about to eat dinner. He was about to eat dinner. That's for number three. Now let's move on to number four. It is the malls. Yes, the malls blank closed. Go. What's the answer? The malls. Malls. Okay, the first correct answer came from, hmm, nabasa ko rin ang pangalan niya, from Vidyu. Hello, Vidyu, kumusta? Okay, also from Joseph, from Gail. Ayan, good job. At ito, very good. Complete sentence ang sagot from Marty Simbol. You were eating some fruits. I'm sorry, number four na tayo, no? Ay, yan yung kanina for number three. Thank you, thank you sa complete answer mo. For number four, ang sagot po natin ay were. Kasi po, ang tanong natin, the malls blank closed. Ang subject natin dito ay malls. Kapag sinabi malls, marami. That is plural. So, were po ang sagot. It will be the malls were closed. Okay? The malls were closed. Next, let's move on to number five. We have... We blank in the province. The subject there is we blank in the province. Okay. Okay, hindi ko na maabutan yung mga comment ninyo, pero I think maraming nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Since the subject is we, the correct answer here is were. We were. It will be, we were in the province. We were in the province. That's for that's for number five. Let's move on to number six. 
Let's just acknowledge those who put their answers in complete sentence. Si Wilmar, ayan, um, Wilmar, uh, just apply the proper capitalization and proper punctuation mark. Simula ng pang-uusap na malaki ang titik at tapusin gamit ang tuldok. Okay? Now, let's move on to number six. It blank a great time. It blank a great time. Put your answers on the live chat box. Okay. Ayan, sabi ni Teacher Janet. It was a great time. Very good, teacher. So for number six, well, the answer is was. It will be it was a great time time. Next, let's move on to number seven. They blank there. They blank there. The subject here is they or sila. Sila ay marami. That is plural. So the correct answer there is the correct answer is were. Alright, that is they were there. They were there. Let's move on to number eight. Number eight is Teresa blank a teacher. Teresa blank a teacher. Teresa is a singular subject. Isa lang si Teresa singular. So what should be the answer? So the answer for that should be was. It will be Teresa was a teacher. Teresa was a teacher. That's in the past. That is siyang teacher. Siguro ngayon, principal na siya, na-promote na siya, you know? Something like that. Number nine. Let's move on to number nine. We have Teresa and Leonard blank teachers. Ngayon, dalawa na yung subject. Plural na. Si Teresa na at si Leonard. So that's plural subject. What should be the correct past B verb? Was or where? Was or were? All right. So the correct answer is were. We have... Teresa and Leonard were teachers. Siguro si Teresa, dating teacher ngayon ay principal na. Si Leonard, dating teacher ngayon ay supervisor na. Something like that. And last for number 10, we have you blank here when I needed you. You blank here when I needed you. For number 9. Uh, for number 10. So the correct answer there, since the subject is you, Ang subject natin ay you. Ang gagamitin ay were. So it will be you were here when I needed you. Okay? So balikan natin yung mga sagot natin. Balikan po natin ha. For number one, I was driving to the office. For number two, you were eating some fruits. For number three, he was about to eat dinner. Number four, the malls were closed. Number five, we were in the province. Number six, it was a great time. Number seven, they were there. Number eight, Teresa was a teacher. Number nine, Teresa and Leonard were teachers. And number ten, you were here, you were here when I needed you. Now, this is my challenge. Paano yung malalaman na kaya nyo na gamitin ng was and where? Simple lang po. Kung kaya nyo gamitin sila sa positive statements or affirmative statement, kung kaya nyo gamitin sila sa negative statement, at kung kaya nyo gamitin sila sa question form. Now, my task is this. I want you to try to change them, the sentences we had, into negative statement and question form. Pakilagay po sa ating live chat box or sa comment section kung ang mapapanood yun na ay replay ng video na ito. So number one, we have the sentence, I was driving to the office. So ang negative statement niya is, I wasn't driving to the office or I was not driving to the office. Para maging question form, it will be, was I driving to the office? Or contraction or negative na, wasn't I driving to the office? Okay? Good job. Next, number two. Yung statement natin na you were eating some fruits para maging negative, you were not 
eating some fruits or you weren't eating some fruits. Kapag question form naman, were you eating some fruits? Kapag negative naman, weren't you eating some fruits? That's it. For number three, we have he was about to eat dinner. He was about to eat dinner. Para maging negative, he was not about to eat dinner. Or the contraction, he was not or he wasn't about to eat dinner. For question, magiging was he about to eat dinner? And negative question, wasn't he about to eat dinner? That's it. Number four, the malls were closed. It will be the malls were not closed. The malls weren't closed. Kapag question naman, were the, mo were the, mo were the malls closed? Or kapag negative question, weren't the malls closed? That's it. Okay? For number five, we were in the province. It will be, we were not in the province. Kapag question, were we not in the pro Were we in the province? Kapag negative, weren't we in the province? Okay? Number six, it was a great time. Magiging, was it a great time? Kapag patanong, kapag negative statement, it was not a great time. Kapag naman they were there, it will be pag negative, magiging they weren't there or they were not there. Kapag magiging tanong siya, were they there? Were they there? Or weren't they there? Number eight, Teresa was a teacher. Magiging Teresa was not a teacher. Kapag magiging tanong naman, was Teresa a teacher or wasn't Teresa a teacher? Number nine natin ay Teresa and Leonard were teachers. Magiging Teresa and Leonard were not teachers. Kapag tanong, magiging were Teresa and Leonard teachers? Kapag negative question, weren't Teresa and Leonard teachers? Okay? And last is this. You were there or you were here when I needed you. It will be you weren't here when I needed you kapag negative statement. Kapag naman question for magiging were you, were you here? Kapag question, were you here when I needed you? Or negative question, weren't you here when I needed you? That's it. So, ganun naman po sila kasimple. Masasabi natin na kaya nyo nang gawin yung mga yun or gamitin yung tamang gamit ng was and where kapag kaya nyo silang gamitin sa affirmative statement, negative statement, and question form. Ngayon po, uh, ilagay ang inyong score sa ating live chat box. Ayan! Yan, may tanong si Hot Popsy. Gusto ko tong tanong mo. Alam mo kung bakit, Hot Popsy? Iyan po ang topic natin bukas, kaya abangan ninyo. Ang tanong niya, paano naman, ma'am, yung paliwanag sa if I were you, why is it where? Bakit ang gamit sa I is were? Diba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, I was, I was at home. Bukas ko po sasagutin yung tanong na yan. Bukas magkita-kita tayo sa ating live at exactly 9pm. Ang topic natin bukas ay if I were you versus if I was, if I was versus if I were. Abangan nyo yan bukas. That's an exciting topic na malalaman ninyo at karaniwang naririnig natin, sasagutin ko po yan bukas. Thank you, Hot Popsy. <laughs> yan talaga yung topic ko bukas. Ayan. Okay, so ilagay ang mga scores sa ating live chat box. Ayan, very good si yung lady na naka-perfect. <laughs> Ayan, congratulations sa mga naka-perfect. I hope marami kayong natutunan at thank you dahil umabot ng more than 200 ang ating live audience tonight. And I hope again, kung marami kayong natutunan, huwag niyo pong kalimutan na i-like ang ating video na ito. Okay. I-like po ang ating video na ito. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Paki-like, paki-share nyo. Dahil gaya na lagi kong sinasabi, sharing is caring. At mag-comment na rin sa ating live chat box or sa comment section sa iba ba, mag-subscribe sa ating channel at thank you po dahil mayroon na tayong 420,000 subscribers. Yay! Ayan. At kapag nag-500,000 tayo, sige, meron ako sa inyong gift. Kaya po, patuloy niyo ang tulungan na mapalawak pa ang ating YouTube online community of learners. And of course, huwag niyo rin pong kalimutan na i-follow ako sa aking Instagram at o bray o underscore bray with five letter H yan. And also, follow me on TikTok at obri.bermudes. At huwag rin kalimutan i-like at i-follow ang aking pong, uh, Facebook page. 
Diyan din ako nagpo-post ng iba tong mga announcement and quick grammar facts. Learn English with Teacher Aubrey. At huwag din po kalimutang supportahan ang aking pong second channel in which I do vlogs together with my family. It is Aubrey and Family Lifestyle TV. And before we end this live tonight, gusto ko pa rin kayong i-motivate with this quotation from Dennis Waitley. Sabi niya, Losers live in the past. Ang mga talunan daw ay nananatili sa nakaraan. Patuloy silang nananatiling namumuhay sa mga alaala o mga pangyayari na nangyari sa nakaraan. While winners learn from the past and enjoy working in the present toward the future. Pero yung mga nagwawagi, sila daw ay yung natututo. Ginagawa ng stepping stone or learning, learning material. Lesson learned yung mga nangyari sa nakaraan at ginagamit yon para ma-apply at hindi na muling magkamali in the present at para ma-enjoy ang present at maihanda ang sarili nila sa parating ng mga pangyayari in their lives in the future. So again, that's from Dennis Waitley. Losers live in the past. Winners learn from the past and enjoy working in the present toward the future. So I hope, my dear learners, you are motivated with that thing at marami kayong natutunan from our live lesson tonight. Bukas po, magkikita-kita tayo for another exciting lesson. Thank you so much, my dear learners. Have a great day. Stay sanitized, stay healthy, stay prayerful. Stay safe. And once again, God bless you all and have a good night. Bye!